In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today, we join her in contemplating the presentation of our Lord in the Temple. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich describes the scene. I had a vision of the aged Simeon. He was a thin, very old man with a short beard. He was an ordinary priest, was married, and had three grown-up sons. I saw Simeon, who lived close to the temple, going through a narrow, dark passage in the temple walls into a small vaulted cell built into the thickness of the wall. The aged Simeon knelt in this little cell, wrapped in prayer. Then the appearance of an angel stood before him and warned him to take heed of the little child who should be first presented early next morning, for this was the Messiah for whom he had so long yearned. After he had seen him, he would soon die. I saw this so plainly, the room was illuminated and the holy old man was radiant with joy. Then I saw him going to his house and telling his wife with great joy what had been announced to him. After his wife had gone to bed, I saw Simeon betake himself to prayer once again. Now we consider Our Lady, a long distance away from Simeon, still in Bethlehem. She is awake at night, herself praying in preparation for the day tomorrow. She herself will also be offering her own body in the temple, that is, offering herself according to the rite of purification. The Jewish women were considered unclean after their birth until this moment, and Our Lady, with all humility, does not consider herself exempt from this rite, but rather, with serious and devout preparation, is meditating upon the offering of herself that she will make in the temple on the following morning. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich says that seeing Our Lady preparing in this way, with such devotion, suggested to her that this is how an individual ought to prepare to make his or her first Holy Communion. Our Lady and Saint Joseph travelled to an inn in Jerusalem and stayed there overnight. The next morning, while it was still dark, Anne Catherine Emmerich describes the Holy Family accompanied by the people of the inn, leaving the inn and going to the temple in Jerusalem, carrying baskets of offerings with the donkey that had been laden for their journey because after going to the temple, the plan was then to return to Nazareth. They went into a walled courtyard in the temple. While Joseph and the innkeeper stabled the donkey in a shed, the Blessed Virgin and her child were kindly received by an aged woman and led into the temple by a covered passage. A light was carried, for it was still dark. No sooner had they entered this passage than the aged priest Simeon came, full of expectation, towards the Blessed Virgin. See the Blessed Virgin led by her guide through the outer courts of the temple where the ceremonies were to take place. See Our Lady greeted by some of her old companions from when she had lived in the temple as a little girl. See her with Anna, the prophetess, whom she already knew. See her with Naomi, her former teacher. See her handing over the offerings to the women in the temple, the basket of offerings, the doves, the turtle doves, and a little compartment with fruit. Joseph helps her in handing these things over. There are many lights burning brightly, many lamps on the doors of the courtyard, and it seems as if there are pyramids of light surrounding them. Now we see Blessed Simeon approaching Our Lady 
in whose arms the infant Jesus is wrapped, wrapped in a sky blue covering, according to Blessed Anne. They go through the railings towards the table where Our Lady lays the child. A supernatural light fills the temple. Everyone notices it. And Blessed Simeon remains standing while Our Lady is before the table. Another priest lifts the infant Jesus from the cradle that's on the table and holds the baby up showing him towards each side of the temple, making a long prayer as he does so. Then this priest hands the child to Simeon. Simeon then goes and places the baby once again in Mary's arms, praying over her and her child from a little scroll hanging on a stand behind him. As the ceremony closes, this is the moment that Simeon approaches to Our Lady, where she is standing, and once again takes the child into his arms, and he proclaims loudly and longly in raptures of joy, thanking God that God has fulfilled his promise. And it is this moment that he intones his Nunc Dimittis, at last, O powerful master, give leave to your servant to go in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. With greatest reverence, St. Joseph and Our Lady humbly listen to these prophetic words. And as Simeon finishes speaking, it is at that moment that the prophetess Anna also filled with inspiration, speaks loudly concerning the infant Jesus, hailing his mother blessed. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich describes how she herself was deeply moved upon seeing these events and seeing other priests noticing what is going on and bystanders much moved, all noticing the great reverence and humility of the Blessed Virgin, the Blessed Virgin was like a rose, a heavenly rose, in full bloom, in perfect radiance. Saint Bridget of Sweden describes another aspect of this mystery. She has a vision on the Feast of the Presentation and she writes, A certain spouse of God saw a countless multitude of angels and of the various ranks of the saintly men of God and of his saintly virgins and ladies all going before the blessed virgin mother of God and surrounding her with all joy and devotion. Before her an angel carried a long, very broad and bloody sword which signified those very great sorrows which Mary suffered at the death of her most loving son and which were prefigured by that sword which the just man Simeon prophesied would pierce her soul. And while all the heavenly court exalted, and then St. Bridget is told by an angel, See with what great honour and glory the Queen of Heaven is on this feast, recompensed for the sword of sorrows which she endured at the passion of her beloved son. Indeed, St. Bridget adds, at the moment of Christ's birth, as Our Lady held him for the first time in her arms, she foresaw the fulfillment of prophecy. As she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, she foresaw the scourging of his flesh, which would make him a leper in the eyes of men. The hands and feet of her child brought the thought of the nails which would pierce them. The face of her son, beautiful beyond the beauty of men, was the face men would spit on. His cheeks would feel the blows of their hatred. His ears would hear the curses of their defiance. No part of that sacred body would escape the bitterness of that most bitter death. And when all breathing ceased, there would still be the soldier's sharp spear to pierce his lifeless heart. If the prophets foresaw these things, would not Mary foresee them even more clearly? She was a mother predestined for the Son of God. How could she not have foreseen his sufferings when he took flesh in her womb for this very purpose? 
the presence of the Holy Spirit would enlighten Our Lady, so that she knew better than the prophets the things that which they, through the Holy Spirit, had foretold. So the words of Blessed Simeon were no surprise to Our Lady. She already knew of the Sword of Sorrow, but indeed this event is considered one of Our Lady's seven sorrows, pushing much more deeply into her soul those sorrows which she already knew of through prophecy. But this mystery is also a joyful mystery, and that is what we are meditating upon, the joy of the presentation in the temple. Saint Sophronius writes, The Mother of God, the most pure virgin, carried the true light in her arms and brought him to those who lay in darkness. Let all of us share in its splendor and be so filled with it that no one remains in the darkness. Let us go together to meet and to receive with the aged Simeon the light whose brilliance is eternal. Rejoicing with Simeon, let us sing a hymn of thanksgiving to God, the Father of light, who sent the true light to dispel the darkness and to give us all a share in his splendor. Through Simeon's eyes, we too have seen the salvation of God, which he prepared for all the nations and revealed as the glory of the new Israel, which is ourselves. As Simeon was released from the bonds of this life when he had seen Christ, so we too were at once freed from our old state of sinfulness. St. Ambrose adds, Observe then this just man, confined as it were in the prison house of his earthly frame. He's longing to be loosed, that he may again be with Christ. Let whosoever would wish to be cleansed come into the temple, into Jerusalem. Let him wait for the Lord's Christ. Let him receive the word of God, and embrace it as it were with the arms of faith, then let him depart, that he might not see death, who has seen life. Now let us pause to notice some of the virtues that we may imitate. Notice Our Lady's humility, her desire to blend in with the crowd. How often we wish to get our exemption from various obligations. How often we want to assert our rights. Our Lady, when she had all right to avoid the ceremony of purification, did not deign to reject it, but rather blended in with the other women, lined up with them in order to have her child blessed and in order to be purified by offering her own body according to the Jewish rites. We consider the poverty of Our Lady and Saint Joseph, their great love of poverty, only recently they had received the money from the three holy kings, and yet we hear nothing of it by the time of the presentation. By the time of the presentation, they have already distributed all that gold to the poor. They have none of it left. As soon as they received, they quickly gave. They gave generously. According to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, much of the money was given to the temple prior so that the girls educated there might receive a proper instruction and have the necessities of life during their stay in the temple. Our Lady was so quick to give, and how much we hoard our possessions, how slow we are in charity, how we often do so with ostentation. There's nothing in Scripture to tell us how Our Lady and Saint Joseph distributed that gold. They did not distribute it with ostentation. They distributed it with humility, with simplicity, and in silence. Now we consider Saint Simeon's approach to his own death. He longs to depart from this world in order to be with his master. He rejoices at the good news of being told of his impending death. O oh Lord Jesus, give me such a devotion to my own death. Let me rejoice when the words come to my ears telling me, Depart from this world. Your time of judgment is near. May I be so prepared for death as with Saint Simeon I may depart with joy 
with an eager desire to go forth from the bonds of this world and be with my master. Let me be so devout in my death that I do not fear purgatory, that my sins have already received their full penance in this life, so with great joy and confidence I may depart from this world, not clinging to the things of this world, but joyfully departing. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich writes, I saw that Simeon fell ill yesterday, immediately on returning home after his prophecy at the presentation of Jesus. But he spoke very joyfully with his wife and sons. Tonight I saw that today was to be the day of his death. Of the many things I saw, I can only remember this much. Simeon, from the couch where he lay, spoke earnestly to his wife and children, telling them of the salvation that was come to Israel and of everything that the angel had announced to him. His joy was touching to behold. Lord Jesus, blessed Mother Mary, may I die with such words of prophecy upon my lips, telling those around me of my certainty about the next life, that I go forward to be judged by Almighty God, but I go forward having asked true forgiveness for my sins, having received the sacraments of the Church. May I be able to say my own nunc dimittis and leave this world at peace with you and with those around me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.